Hello and welcome to our wall framing course. I'm Joe Carswell and this is one of several lessons. In this lesson, we're going to cover the parts and pieces of a wall panel. Let's get right into it. First things first, let's talk about the materials that we will typically use to build a wall panel out of. I've got two uh, standard lumber sizes here and chances are one or the other will cover uh, a wall panel that needs to get built in most buildings. This is a standard two by four lumber this is a standard two by six board. These two uh, materials are the most common you'll see. In Colorado, our weather is kind of cold here and the colder climates use a wider stock lumber for the exterior walls. The two by fours tend to be here in Colorado, more interior wall panels. If you're in a more moderate climate, say East Coast, maybe North Carolina, this, would, this could be an exterior wall uh, panel as well. A two by four would work fine for that. That's to code and that would work. Now that we know our lumber, uh, we need to talk about how this goes together to make a wall. So depending on where the, these parts are positioned in the wall, they will have different jobs. They'll have a different name. Let's start with our plates. Depending on where they are in the wall, we would either call it on the bottom, a bottom plate, or on the top, a top plate. These will lay flat with the broad side up like this. And our plates are really important in the wall. They need to be straight. They define the, uh, the line or the shape of the wall. If this plate is curved, the wall will be curved. So we want nice straight plates. They will hold all of our other parts in place. So we have our bottom plate. We have our top plate. What happens in between? You guessed it. We need some vertical pieces in here. All of these vertical parts will be called studs. Our first stud to talk about will be an end stud. End studs happen at the end of the plate. That would be on this side and then on this side. That covers those two. We also have a bunch of parts in the middle. These will be called common studs. So all of our common studs will happen inside of our end studs. And I really don't have enough room to show this to you here, but I do have a model that'll help explain this. So here I have a model that is scaled to 25% of actual size. Now we see what is, uh, if we were to have this at actual size, this would be 16 feet long. So all of my parts are showing up right here. Quick review, I have my bottom plate we talked about. I have my top plate here, and then I have my two end studs on either end here. All of these become my common studs. Now you can see in this model that my common studs are happening on very regular intervals within this wall panel. That's a very important part of framing. It happens not only in walls, but other aspects of framing as well. We're taking this repeating pattern of specific dimensions, and I'm, we'll call that uh, layout. So that term means that we're laying out this standard pattern or progression of dimensions. This happens to scale down to 24 inches on center. That's a very common layout pattern. And if you were to run a tape measure on this, you would have a common stud at 24, 48 inches. We have another one at six feet, eight feet, 10 feet, 12, 14, all the way down to 16. That is our 24 on center. You might see a wall laid out at 16 on center. That would give me every 16 inches we would center one of these common studs. You might even see a 12 inch on center wall. As we decrease the space between them, we're increasing the number of studs and the wall gets stronger. Depending on the specs of the plans, any of those layouts can happen on any building. So we're sticking with our 24 on center here. We have all of our parts in place. And the only other piece on this wall to talk about is what is this extra layer on top? So what I have on top here is a double layer top plate. We'll call that a double top plate. What this does for us, especially on exterior walls, is effectively we're doubling the strength of the weight bearing of this particular member. We have weight bearing on the top of this wall. It's transferred to this top plate and down through these vertical parts or our studs down to our bottom plate and we're doubling up on these so that we can double the strength of them. Also, we're doubling this so that we have better fastening surface. If you think about a 16D nail, that's three and a half inches long. 
one two by up here is just not going to cut it to fasten any materials which uh, that would be a floor or a roof on top so we need that extra material the other thing our double top lay does for us is when we have more than one wall panel and we need to connect them this process of of two layers can help us connect this in corners and tees and other situations when we're building Hi, sorry for the interruption. I had a quick message for you. We offer a lot of other lessons at our learning portal, which is tradeskillsu.com. If you're a teacher and you found us here, we have a ton of other resources to help you with your students teach them construction in a digital environment. You can find those at teachconstruction.org. Once again, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. So this example I've given you for a wall panel is about as basic as it gets you can see the patterns you can see all the parts and there's not a lot of them in real life it's very rare that you have a solid continuous wall like this with no openings we like our openings whether that's for doors or windows and it happens a lot in a building so what do we do to make this wall panel have uh, openings like doors and windows this concept is that we're punching a hole in the wall if you look at the presentation we've removed some common studs if we were to add weight to this wall from above right now, this wall would collapse. We have some very large spans or openings in there that are unsupported. What our rough opening does is allows us to cut or punch that hole in this wall panel, but still carry that weight from above effectively down to the rough opening and around it down to the bottom plate. One of your first parts to mention would be your king studs. These will be at either side of your rough opening these are your last full studs they were carry from your bottom plate to your top plate they're basically the same length as your end studs and your common studs we call them kinks because they're associated with this rough opening our next part is our header headers are horizontal and th think of them like a bridge this will take any weight above it and then carry it to the outside parts around the rough opening just like a bridge would do it's going to span and it will span the width of this rough opening these headers can be made out of various materials either stock lumber they can be made out of stranded lumber they can be made out of laminated lumber but they're specifically designed to handle a certain amount of weight depending on the span and the bearing from above and they also need to be supported as well so your jack studs come in at this point these are parts that will fit from the bottom plate up to the underside of that header you'll notice a jack stud on either side of the header and they carry all the way down to the bottom plate you'll also notice that your jack studs will define the the outside edges of your rough opening so we have some more parts to talk about and I have another model that'll help explain this here is my same scaled model but with our door and window openings added to review really quickly we have our uh, last full studs which we call king studs these are related to our rough openings we also have our header which is at the top of the rough opening we have a header for our window here and if you notice these parts inside of each end of the header those are our jack studs so we now have our bridge built and we've supported it all the way down to our bottom plate but now we need to carry whatever weight is on this area right in between our king studs we need to carry that down to our header we're going to do that with cripple studs cripple studs are partial studs that will travel from our top plate down to our header it's going to be put at the same place that our common studs would be placed whether that's 24 on center 16 on center whatever 12 on center and they're going to carry that weight down evenly so they bear on our header this weight comes down it travels through our header to the outside travels down our jack studs down to our bottom plate and carries all the way down to the ground you might notice that on our uh, door rough opening we have two cripples and on our window rough opening I only have one that's because that's how our layout works on this wall here's my first or my common stud the next 24 inches becomes my cripple next 24 is a cripple I have a full common stud here I also have another common stud here when I hit my window I only have one cripple between this span so that's the only piece that I put in so this layout 
that looks so confusing can become very simple when you start measuring and finding that layout and how it relates to the rough opening. So at this point in the rough opening process, our door and our window have gone together exactly the same. We've got two kings, two jacks, a header, and cripples. To finish out our window rough opening, we need some more parts. And this part down here, we're going to call it a sill. This defines the bottom of the rough opening. It'll support the window while it's being hung. It's not a structural part. It's always run horizontal, and it will define this lower end of our rough opening. Any layout that happens above with our cripples has to continue down here as well. So that's what this part is. So you'd call this a cripple as well, just like this one. So this is a perfect time to get something clear. That's our philosophy about framing and the information that I'm giving you. If you search this out online, if you go to a, uh, a job site, you're going to see variations of framing that are different than what you're seeing here. There's a lot of different philosophies about how to get this done. Ours is to look at code, follow code, and do only what's necessary because energy efficiency is really important and saving materials and material cost is really important. So if you don't need it in your framing, we're leaving that out. So this is our beginnings into framing. I hope all this makes sense. Learn your parts and learn these concepts of layout, rough openings, plate studs. All of this will make more sense as we add the lessons in. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.